how's it going? Hope you're having a good day. Uh, in this video, I will be making a cribbage board. Um, cribbage is a game from the 1600s invented by Sir John Suckling, who was an English poet. Uh, it derives from the original game, Naughty. Now, am I an expert in cribbage? Maybe, and maybe absolutely not. Maybe I looked up that information 30 seconds ago because I have no idea what cribbage is. Um, I had someone ask me to make them a cribbage board and when I looked it up, it looked like something I could do. Um, I was also able to find this template on Amazon. Um, I'll put a link for this. Um, it was reasonably priced and it is steel. So I should be able to make infinite at least, or at least a lot of cribbage boards from this template. Um, and I also wanted to show this is a already, um, the client actually let me borrow this board to get an idea of what a cribbage board is, feels like. Um, I have no idea how to play the game, um, so, uh, so don't ask me please. Um, but it looks relatively cool, um, a lot of holes to, to drill press, so we'll definitely go over that uh, for sure in the video. Um, but um, I wanted to buy the template because I believe um, it's a really popular game in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I could be wrong about that. I just know a lot of people from the Pacific Northwest not only know this game, but love it. Um, so I wanted to get a template. So hopefully I'll make some more for some people. Um, the wood I'll be using for this is the main wood of the board will be maple. And I will have two walnut stripes going through it. Um, the process will be somewhat similar to doing a cutting board where we'll uh, rip the boards to size, we'll joint them, we'll plane them, um, we'll glue them up like normal. Um, I believe I'll probably do it as an end grain um, just to get an even nicer look. Um, but yeah, we'll go through step by step how to do a cribbage board. And uh, so here we go. the two walnut strips to the same length there. Um, so from there, I ripped all the, the the depth or the thickness of the board. I did that one inch as I showed. Um, so that's how thick both boards will be. And by both boards, I'll show you what I mean by that later. Um, now I'm going to, um, I don't know if you can see from here, but the boards are a little um, uneven with the thickness. So this is where the jointer and the planer come in. Um, I'm gonna do this before uh, the, the boards individually, before the board is finished. 
Um, that way, if there's any, if it gouges or does any damage to the board, I can replace the board or I can fix it. Um, once it's done and in the finishing stages, I certainly don't want to join or plan it then. Um, it probably can be done. Um, but I just get a little nervous about the um, jointer or the planer gouging and then ruining um, the almost finished project and having to start over. So that's my thought. Um, whether that's correct or not, I'm not sure, um, but that's the way I do it just to be safe. Uh, so again, now we want to get those boards as even as possible before glue up to um, alleviate work down the line. So let's get that going. So for my passes, I do just between zero and one sixty fourth of an inch. Um, I don't see the need to take way more material than needed. Um, one or two passes might get what you need and a sixty fourth um, can can do that in my opinion. I think you should do a little bit of a time, take your time, take less as material as possible and achieve the look you need. <music> So that was the jointing part of the process on the individual boards uh, for the cribbage board. One thing I wanted to point out was when I was putting the boards through, you might have noticed that the individual walnut strips I had were butted up against a piece of maple. Um, I will be doing this as well on the planer, and the reason is sending a thin strip of wood, in this case walnut, through a jointer or planer to me is a little unsafe. Um, the paddles, the push paddles don't have much surface area to push against when you're sending it through, um, which leaves your grip a little um, uncertain and it can tip over, kick out, hurt you, hurt the wood, all those kind of things. Same thing in the planer. Um, when a planer, when a piece of wood goes through the planer, there are rubber wheels that push down on top of the wood and the blades are in between which cut, which uh, trim the wood. Um, when it's pushing down, it obviously creates a lot of force and you want that individual piece, especially when it's this thin, to be stable. So putting it between, um, in, this case, in this case I have maple, um, but if you don't have, if your whole project is thin pieces of wood, get sacrificial pieces of wood to put next to that thin strip, um, especially through the planer, you're gonna want it to be nice and sturdy and secure. So I will be sending these through um, because these will be getting plain, the walnut will be getting plain, it's kind of two birds with one stone in my case. Um, but most importantly, that piece of walnut will be secure and it, it shouldn't be going anywhere. Um, and it'll be safe for the wood, the planer, and myself from any uh, damage. So uh, we'll plane the boards now and you'll see what I mean. When you're courageous, just like when people will borrow your sorrow. The only way to live is like there's no part of the video. Um, we did our, our passes. I'm happy with the way it came out. The boards are much more level. Now it should make a nice pleasant glue up. Um, <clears throat> one thing I wanted to point out, um, kind of random side note, was the planer, <clears throat> excuse me, the planer makes a significant amount of dust and shavings fly everywhere. Um, my recommendation um, if you have a dust collection system great hook it up to it call it a day that's fantastic um, i don't have that um, but what i do have is a, a rigid uh, shop vac that i just um, retrofit to the exhaust hose of the the planer um, and i put some paper towels around the the smaller part of the vacuum and just blue tape this onto here and um, i do have the vacuum the shot back on a different circuit as the planer. Those two together will short out the circuit immediately. Um, we'll trip the breaker for sure. Um, but, you know, improvise when you can. Um, this works great even on the table saw, the, the jointer, anything that has a uh, dust chute, if you will. Um, but this is just a great fix if you don't have a nice dust collection system in your garage. Um, I just wanted to point that out. Um, but it's definitely a great compromise to dust collection and works significantly well, I think. So just a, a side note, uh, might find that useful. Okay, so that was the 
planar part of the process. Um, as I mentioned before in the, in the last uh, short segment, um, I'm, I'm happy with the, the, the levels of the individual pieces of wood to go ahead and glue up. Um, so we'll do that now. I will um, show you the, uh, the glue up process for the, the cribbage board. Okay, so we're now at the glue up part of the cribbage board process. And you can see these three um, strips of blue tape I have here. Um, this is a great little trick um, for squeeze out on your clamps. Um, this will ensure that any squeeze out that comes from the boards just goes on the tape. When you're all done, you rip the tape up, the glue comes with it, you're all done. Um, if you don't put the tape down, the glue can get on the, the steel part of the clamps and it is incredibly difficult to get off. It takes a lot of time and it's just quite unpleasant. Uh, so this is a quick, uh, solution that that does does the job well um, for the actual glue up part of the process I like to line everything up as it is and turn the board to the side that will be glued and I believe it was bourbon moth that guy's got some killer videos but I think he was using these he's a, it's like a condiment uh, dispenser to put glue in and it makes glue up um, to me so much easier um, because of the squeeze of it it's just like a ketchup or mustard um, bottle it comes out really smooth as you can see um, it's just a really great way to glue up and gets the job done very well which is what we're always going for so i'll speed this up so you can see the whole process a lot faster i never worry about things that i can't see you never know what looks at you now one thing i did want to note on this is make sure when you are gluing up that you put enough glue on and you spread the glue across all to the edges of your board. Um, I'm not ashamed to admit very early on when I was making cutting boards I would just put a stream down the middle and I assume because when the boards are clamped together that the pressure spreads the glue out and it would be a done deal. Um, my boards would then crack a few months after um, and I was very embarrassed at some of the products I put out um, but like anything in life especially when we're working a mistake is a lesson um, I never did that again I always took the time spread to the corners spread to the edges make sure the whole board uh, is covered with a, a good amount of glue do not go cheap on the glue do not um, be conservative with the glue make sure you apply a a significant amount to make to make sure it's, it's spread and the boards will joint where they need to. Sorry about that, my head hit the camera. Okay, so for the actual clamp parts, I'm gonna make sure everything is nice and I'll be cutting these ends off so the ends don't have to be perfect. Um, just start in the middle, and then clamp down a little bit. Get some pressure, you start to see the squeeze out. Great. Go to the side. Some squeeze out a good sign. That means we got enough glue in there. Glue squeeze out is a good thing when you're doing these because it means you're you have enough glue. Okay, so another thing I wanted to point out that I forgot to do, which is why I walked away from where the video just cut off very quickly, was because I wanted to get this done before glue sets. It takes a long time to set, but it does get tricky to move the wood um, about 10-15 minutes after wood sets, or starts to set I should say. Um, it gets really tricky to move it. So I use these clamps almost like cause for wood uh, when you're doing any kind of um, jointing like this. Um, and I just put the clamp 
where the boards are kind of moving uneven just a little bit. Um, and that will just even them out. I have it on both ends, so it just helps the, the wood be a little bit more um, even. In this case, the walnut was sitting at slightly lower than the maple. And instead of trying to push down and trying to get it with your hands, it's easier to use a call or sometimes I'll, like I'm doing now, I'll just use these clamps and it'll clamp them all back to relatively even. Um, which gives it a nice, again, um, when it's all finished, a lot easier to work with. Um, so I'll go ahead and get these a little tighten. You don't want to over tighten. There's no, you don't need to incredible hulk these clamps and put all of your, your might into it. You just don't want the wood moving. Check these clamps, especially these cabinet clamps, to make sure the wood isn't moving once it's in there. Um, sometimes you'll tighten all the way, it'll seem like a set and there'll be movement on the clamp. Um, but just enough there's there's pressure on it the, the glue gets squeezed out there's you can clearly see everything's coming together nicely that's that's just the way it should be you don't need to go to town on these clamps and um, you know risk bowing even with these nice clamps if you go too tight you'll start to push the wood in directions it doesn't want to go um, another thing I like to do is give me one second. another thing I like to do is you can do it right away, um, but it's better to wait a couple minutes to the glue until the glue starts to harden a little bit. And you can take a chisel. Um, I don't, you can see this chisel's in bad shape. I don't really use this to actually chisel wood. Um, it's more of a utility chisel. Um, but you take it and you scrape the glue off. Um, once it's gummy, uh, it'll, it'll come right up. Um, and it won't really stick to the wood or leave a trail of, of liquid glue on the wood. Um, this is a, to me, it's actually a really great step, especially when you're doing things like um, cutting boards and butcher blocks. Um, this is a crucial step and makes your life a whole lot easier um, because getting this glue off when the um, glue is completely dry can be a bit of a hassle. Um, and so you might as well just wait 10 or 15 minutes, come back when it's nice and gooey, and then um, you know, just, just scrape it off and it'll make for a lot easier. Um, when you're done with sanding and things like that, you'll have to worry about sanding the wood and not getting rid of any glue, which to me is uh, ideal. Okay, so we have the board removed from the glue up clamps. Um, this is where we will start working our way through um, the grits. So this From here on, it's just essentially starting at, I'm gonna start at 120. And um, because this will be um, just oiled when I'm finished, uh, I will probably go somewhere up in the 300 um, range of grit. I'll probably do 120, 180, 220, and then um, finish at 320 or somewhere around there, um, just because it makes it so incredibly smooth. Um, and when you when you oil it, it just makes it just absolutely beautiful. So that's probably where I'll stop is somewhere in the 220 or three, 300 range um, to achieve the look I'm I'm looking for. I'm gonna sand these down and then I'll be cutting the board in half. This will make two boards. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I, I would get to that. Um, one board will be the actual cribbage board. And another board will be, um, I'll, I'll router out slots for the deck of cards and for the, the pegs of the game to go into. And then I'll magnet those together as a nice little set for the client. Um, it should come out uh, pretty good, I think. So let's get started sanding. Okay, cool. So I did a, this was done with 120. Um, it has a nice look to it. Um, we're gonna keep going though. Um, you can see here what I did, um, what I do when I'm doing cutting boards, but I'll do for this as well, is you spray between each sanding when you're moving up through the grit. And that allows, um, when it dries, the end grain of the wood to rise up. And when you sand it uh, with that end grain risen like that, you get a much closer sand on the wood and a much better finish. So I always do that on cutting boards and butcher blocks, but I'm gonna do it on this as well to give, give it a nice uh, polished end look.
Okay, so we have both boards now have been down to 220 grit, which I'm gonna stop there. Um, it has the the feel I'm looking for and it'll take the, the finishing oil really nice. So um, the next step is to um, drill. So the one board I'll put aside because that will be the board we route later for the cards and the pegs. And I will take the template and use this one board as the uh, the game board. So I'll, I will get the board placed evenly so there's even amount of space on, on all four sides. And then um, blue tape the sides, all four sides down. Uh, so when I'm getting to like the edge here, the three sides will still be taped and I'll lift up the tape on this side to get these holes. Then I'm gonna finish with that, put the blue tape back on, take the blue tape off this side, you know, and so on. Um, so all the sides are, are complete. Um, let me move the, uh, the camera angle to better fit on the uh, drill press and we'll get started uh, drilling all of these holes. Okay, so one thing I wanted to show is I'm gonna take one of the, one of the pegs that will be used um, one of the pegs that will be used it's an actual game peg uh, and I'm going to take a scrap piece of wood and it's actually the cutoff as you can see it's the cutoff from um, it's cut off from the board from the, uh, the game board so that way I will set the depth um, with the with the drill bit um, to make sure the pin because oh sorry I keep hitting this with my head I'm sorry um, you want to I'm gonna go a little bit and I'm gonna keep drilling down until this peg this peg fits in just right on this um, and then once that is set I will set the um, over here on this side the um, the drill stop to get that consistent depth every time um, Another thing I wanted to, to note is that the template came with um, two uh, drill bits um, for, the, for the template. And um, from what I understand, I watched a couple videos guys making these and they uh, believe with the metal template, you, I think you go through a lot of bits. I think you break some bits. This came with two, so I'm gonna use these two to salvage mine as long as I can, um, but I might have to go <laughs> buy some more if I break more bits than I have, so. It's just something to note. If you buy the template, use their bits first so you can save yours as long as possible. Okay, so I uh, kept doing drills until I found a nice snug fit. And as you can see, it's sitting there still pretty high and it's fitting there real nice and snug. It is, is one and one eighth inch down. Is So when I go down, the drill is set to one and one eighth inch. From here, it's not going one and one eighth inch into the wood. It's just from the rest position down to where I have the the, the table set with the wood and everything. It is one and one eighth inch. Okay, so the board is ready to be drilled. As you can see, I use plenty of blue tape around the sides here. I cannot think of a worse case scenario than doing this board and having the tape move. That's just, uh, or having the template move and having to start over or something like that. So make sure you get a lot of tape on there. Okay, so as you can see, we have all of the holes drilled from the templates. Um, if you can notice, I don't know if you can see that, it is, um, it, it did pop up the wood a little bit. So we'll just sand that out back with the the 220 and just get it nice and smooth again because it's it's a significant um you can maybe kind of see it there it's just raised it up um, a little bit where each uh drill went in um one thing i did want to note also about the process of doing a template um i would highly recommend getting the metal one um, i have not used the uh plastic one to to be honest um but just through the process of doing the metal one there was a couple times where the drill you know after you do so many, you kind of, you know, get the tunnel vision a little bit. And I missed um, just slightly on the hole. And then the metal, it being metal kind of guided it back to where it needed to be, which was 
really nice. Um, so just a, a tip, um, maybe you have a, a better drill press and a better uh, eyesight and steady hand than I do, and that, that won't be an issue, but um, the, the metal came in handy with that where the, it guided the drill and, and didn't do anything to the actual template. So that was nice. Um, so yeah, we'll sand this down and then um, we'll move on to doing the, oh, sorry, again, I keep bumping this thing. <laughs> we'll move on to doing the bottom board of the, where it's gonna hold the cards and the pegs. So, oh, sorry, again with my head. Sorry, I wanted to point out one more thing. Um, when I sanded the the raised bits off, um, it kind of chipped out. You can see some of it like here um, and little spots around there. Uh, I'm, sorry, I was waiting for that car to pass. Uh, I'm not really okay with that. Um, I'm obviously not gonna start over. What I am gonna do is get a, um, I'm gonna start with a heavier grit sandpaper and and try to get out as much of those imperfections as I can. Um, it won't be perfect, but I do feel I have to do better than that. Um, so I'm gonna take a low, lower grit, maybe I'll start 120 again and just try to uh, go back up through the grits and try to get some of these imperfections out. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is on this second board, I'm going to do the storage for the pins and the deck of cards. Um, for the pins, I'm just going to do, um, since the board is fairly thick, I'm just going to do a, oh, sorry, a one inch Forstner bit straight down and uh, carve out a nice chunk um, for the for the pins. Uh, for the cards, I'm just kind of simply, um, I'll speed this process up. Uh, I'll explain it real quick though. I'm just going to take my speed square and get it level, or excuse me, even on both sides. Just kind of line it up all nice and even, um, trace it. And then I will do a nice little, um, either on this side or the other side, a little half moon shape um, to be able to grip the cards out when you're ready to play. Uh, so I'll speed that up so you can see what I mean. Okay, cool. So we have that, I'll clean it up and I'll probably go about a 16th of an inch outside this line. Um, you don't want the cards in there so tight that you're not really able to get them out. Um, plus, uh, I'm sure the cardboard casing for cards are all a little different size, so you want a little room for play um, in there. You don't want it to be airtight um, because the client's cards are probably not this exact deck of cards. Um, so we'll get working on that and I'll add the little um, half moon um, cutout as well to grip the cards out. So um, let's do that. Another thing I wanted to, I'll speed up, but I'll explain what I'm going to do is um, these boards will be magnetized together. So what I'm going to do is just measure the same point down and over on each board or up and over um, on each board. So the magnets will obviously be nice and even and stick together really nicely. I will more than likely use the drill press to make that drill um, just to get those boards as tight as possible when they are magnetized um, together. So I'll speed that up and show that real quick. All right, so we got the hole drilled out for the, um, where the pegs are gonna go. Now it's time to um, do the piece for the, where the deck of cards will Will be stored. Um, I, I'm going to use a router to completely finish this out. However, um, to help with that process, I am going to use the Forstner bit and take out a lot of this, uh, a lot of the wood, um, just to make it easier for when I'm routing. Um, the Forstner bits do have a tip that comes down, so I don't want to set this to the final depth of what the cards will be, um, because I do want my router bit on the bottom to make it nice and smooth. Because if I were to use this. Um, there would be the little the, the point, maybe all kinds of um, uh, drill marks from the uh, the fortunate bit point all up down on the inside of this, and, and it would be uneven layers and look just absolutely horrible. So I'm going to set this probably a little bit close to where it should be, um, as far as because I do want to take out as much material as possible with this. 
So I will get down quite a bit on, on getting this wood out, uh, but then I will, um, when I do my router, I will go slightly lower to then make sure I remove all those um, holes that this part of the portion of it leaves. And then that will be my final depth. So yeah, we'll just go through that. I'll just kind of set that um, drill stop first to make sure we don't go too far down. Um, and we go, but we also go down far enough. Um, and then we'll go on to the router part of it, but we'll just get this going first. So we got a lot of it out. Um, you can see here, when I was trying to do these small parts with the blade or with the drill bit, um, the drill didn't really like that. So I'll get that with the router, but you can see what I mean with the holes from the portioner bit and how it kind of leaves those marks. Um, so I'll set my router to the final depth and we'll clean all this up and get all those, those holes out and make it a nice smooth um, uh, casing for the cards. Okay, so I wanted to just show this. This is how I'm going to set the depth for um, for the for the card storage area. You see, it's a little bit below it, so I'm just gonna set this router up a little bit. So we'll take it and we'll just kind of move it up. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong way. So that way. Let's go, we'll go a little bit below it there. I don't know if you can see it from there. It's pretty much set to the depth. You can see I'm going a little bit below it. That way it's just when those two boards sit together that there's enough room I know that the cards will be sunk down in. And then if you take this up, here's the actual board. So you can see that we will still have plenty of room where we're not going to go through the board. It'll be pretty deep. Uh, cut out but it should still be plenty of uh, room there for it so we can uh, get started hauling this thing out so the bit i was using was uh it was just too long um on the lowest setting it was still taking tar far too much material out it didn't ruin it or anything but it was just having a really hard time cutting through all that wood so i switched it out to a shorter bit um it's the bottom uh cleaning one where it makes a nice uh very smooth bottom uh, but it's just a little shorter and fatter. Um, so I'll start really low uh, pass and then move my way down um, throughout just to make it easier on myself in the bit. Um, when you're taking that much material out, you got to be really careful with the router. Um, there's an on-off switch, so you don't want the router getting away from you. It's not like it has a trigger where as soon as you let go, it turns off. Um, if it were to get away from you, it would still be on. Uh, so you just want to be super careful. Just go a little bit at a time and work your way down. Okay, so here's a perfect example of what I did not want to happen. Uh, yesterday I was routing out my uh, card slot holder here and you can go easy on me, I was freehanding. Um, and I was lowering the bit when I thought I was raising it and I went right through the wood. Um, <clears throat> obviously the card needs something to sit on, so I went to Lowe's and got some epoxy resin, uh, poured it last night and as you can see it's it's set um, and it looks fine. I should have um, used a bullet torch and got bubbles out. I don't have one. 
Um, I don't think it's too bad, but in the future, this was a last minute fix that I needed to just quickly do. Um, I will definitely use the bullet torch next time and get those bubbles out. Um, now I'm going to, I have my marks here, I'm going to uh, drill the spots for the magnum so those boards can stick together. Um, then we'll sand it and, uh, and get it finished. Okay, so you see we have our four holes drilled for the magnet. What I did was I got the drill press going, got the bit in, and on one hole, I kept going down just a little bit until I had that magnet sitting just along the surface of the wood. Once that was done, I turned the drill off, lowered the drill sitting on my hole, and then set the stop to that setting so that I knew when I did my other three holes, they would be the exact same um, as, as my first hole. So that way you can see I got a nice consistent uh, drill the whole way around and those magnets are really nice, and, nice and flush inside the wood there. So the next thing we'll be to do is to glue the magnets in the holes so that when it's not being used, it could be a nice storage of the magnetized closed and just be a nicer, nicer look. So we will use, I'll put the glue on the back of the magnets, spray the accelerator in the hole and then those two, that will form the bond quickly. I will say I have used this before. This stuff is incredible, but it's also pretty dangerous in terms of um, getting it on your skin. So you wanna use, I'm gonna actually use my thick work gloves here um, for, for this glue because I used latex gloves before and I accidentally got this on, my, on the gloves and I could feel the incredible heat through the gloves and like I took it off in time. Um, but this stuff is no joke. It's a chemical reaction and it can burn your skin. So use thick gloves Just be super overly safe um, And make sure you just take caution in what you're doing when you're dealing with the chemical bonds reacting that fast um, So I'll I'll do that now. I'll speed it up just so you can see um, But make sure another huge tip is make sure you have the correct um, polarization um, you don't want to super glue these into place and then have them opposing each other and then it won't uh, sit in there, you know, it won't magnetize at all. I want to make sure you have the right, the correct polarizations on, on the boards. So this one, do it like that. And I know that's going to stick to that side, so I'll immediately put it like that. Same thing, I know those are sticking together. So then I'll quickly flip it, and that way I know those will stick to each other. So I have those in. Um, you saw me put the glue in the fridge. The guy at the hardware store, or the woodworking store I bought this from said it'll last, uh, the glue will actually last longer if you keep it in the fridge. Um, so you can see here, I don't know if you saw when that happened, but a little glue dripped onto the accelerator and it hardened immediately. So that's what I mean, this stuff is no joke. It's, it's super um, dangerous if used improperly, um, but super effective um, when, used, when used properly. So I believe this should be Nope. So now it's got a nice storage case for it. The wood's heavy. These, I mean, these magnets aren't meant to pick it up, but you can see it's it'll do its job for to close it off and keep it nice and secure when it's not in use. So, so pretty cool. Um, now we'll just um, sand the wood and uh, and um, finish it and get this over to the uh, clients. Okay, cool. So I finished sanding, and now we'll go ahead and. Do the very finishing um, touch and just putting the, the oil on the board. It'll probably leak down into these holes. Well, I mean, it will for sure, but that's okay because it'll soak down into the wood. So you can just uh, kind of pour it on. All right, everybody, that is it for this video. As usual, I hope it helps somebody make a cribbage board, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.